Hare Krishna. Good, good evening. <laughs> good evening. <clears throat> we are celebrating the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> Go Ranga. Goranga. <laughs> very good, very good. <clears throat> this this morning I asked the devotees a somewhat embarrassing question. I asked them, <clears throat> who has read the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita? Should I ask this question this evening? No, don't ask us this. <clears throat> what I also suggested was for those who have not begun to read Chaitanya Charitamrita, today is a very good day to begin. Now, you may have assorted excuses for not doing this, such as, I don't have a copy of the book. <clears throat> is there a solution to that problem? Hmm book is available. When Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, our great-great-great-grandfather Acharya of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, in this early, early second half of the 19th century, 1869, so that's uh, 150 years ago, something like that. He was looking for a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. It was very difficult to get. Finally, he was able to get a copy. It was not like today. Now, Chaitanya Charitamrita is easily available. Yes? Sometimes we think, yes, I have the books. They're all on my shelf at home. They look very nice on the shelf. I don't want to disturb them. <laughs> Let them stay nicely on the shelf. You are all well-educated people. You know books are for reading. But now we think there is no time for reading. Why? Because we have our mobile phones. And there's so much to do with our mobile phones. No time. <laughs> okay, for those of us who are feeling like this, we have so little time. There is a very well done Compact Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is called CC Compact. Uh, by one very dynamic preacher, Brahmachari in London, Sutapa Prabhu. 
And this book is available online, free for download from his website. <clears throat> and this book is only 130 pages. But actually his purpose in writing this small book is not for us to just read this small book and say, I am knowing Chaitanya Charitamrita, now I am finished. Rather, the purpose is to inspire us to read the original, complete book of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who went to great pains to write this book Toward the end of his life, he wrote, I believe in the eighth chapter of Adi Lila, I do not know how will I complete this book. My hands are shaking. He was in his 90s. By Krishna's, Krishna's grace, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grace, by the blessings of the Vrindavan, Vaishnavas, he was able to complete his work, which came to be regarded by the Vaishnav community as the crown jewel, the crest jewel, the best of all the biographies of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by the time he wrote, there had already been some six biographies either in Sanskrit or in Beng Bengali language. From this CC compact, we can get a very nice overview of the Chaitanya Charitamrita in terms of what Sutta Paprabhu uh, uh, gives us as themes of the book. Many of you will know that Chaitanya Charitamrita is in three parts, the Adi Lila, Madhya Lila, and Antya Lila. Each of these can be divided into four, so that we have altogether 12 parts of the book. And each of these four have a word as a theme. So for the Adi Lila, uh, the first 12 chapters are the invocation. I have to say that many who begin reading at the beginning of Chaitanya Jayatamrita find themselves a little bit, um, we say in English, bogged down by these first 12 chapters. I see some nodding heads. Why do we get bogged down? Because Krishna Das Kaviraj is giving us a lot of philosophy, a lot of theology in these first chapters, especially the first, um, I would say the first six chapters. He gives a lot of very detailed, very dense uh, philosophy. And then we find in chapters 10 through 12, we find lists of names of so many of the associates of Lord Chaitanya. And these are all listed in terms of their relationship uh, to the lines of succession. So we may read this and think, well, this is not so exciting. There's no stories here. There's no drama. So, <clears throat> and yet if we read these in, the, in, a, in a spirit of appreciating, these are eternal associates of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, persons who have directly associated with the Lord, then it becomes very nice, very special. 
Chapters 13 and 14 are telling the story of Mahaprabhu's appearance. How he uh, appeared in the house of Jagannath, in the home of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi, Sachi Devi, Sachi Mata. <clears throat> Jagannath Mishra came from what is now Bangladesh. He, like many Vaishnavas, had migrated to Navadvip because Navadvip had become a center of learning. I believe it was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur referred to Navadvip as the Oxford of Bengal, of India at the time. Many learned scholars were there. So Jagannath Mishra was such a learned scholar. He was uh, from a tradition of learned Brahmin, Pandits. And we hear in these chapters the wonderful stories of little Nimai. Nimai. A little, a little troublemaker, a little divine troublemaker who is always keeping his mother in great anxiety for all the mischief that he makes. His mother and also his father are kept in great anxiety. His father is very embarrassed by what his son does. His son this young boy goes to the bank of the Ganga after school and plays in the water with his friends. Well, that wouldn't be so bad. But what does he do? As the elder Brahmin men are in the Ganga bathing and, and then very seriously standing um, up to their up to their waist or their chest in water to silently chant the gayatri mantra what does nimai do he dives underneath the water and he swims and he swims between their legs and upsets them naturally they become very disturbed and then they go to his father and they report, your son is doing like this and like this, and Jagannath Mishra wants to scold his son. And when he gets a dream at night, saying, you should not be, this is none other than Narayan, this is the Lord himself. You can't treat him like this. Jagannath Mishra says, yes I can, he is my son. You may tell me whatever you like, Narayan, I don't know what you're talking about. He's my son, I have to discipline him. So these, these activities are going on. And then the education of Nimai, he's actually kept his father keeps him away from school for some time because he's become such a troublemaker. But uh, he insists, he makes some tricks and he gets himself back in school and he excels in school uh, under the guidance of Gang Ganga Das and uh, one other teacher. Whatever he hears, he remembers. He becomes himself a very accomplished pundit, especially in Vyakaran, in Sanskrit grammar, and according to some, also in Nyaya, in uh, logic. And these uh, features, these special qualities that he has, causes the Vaishnavas to become worried. 
he's become a big, big pundit and he doesn't care about Krishna. We're talking about none other than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but at this time, the elders are worried about him. You know, like many parents, they worry about the, their teenage children. Isn't it? Teenagers, you know, they're not interested in anything except whatever they're interested in. <laughs> Better not ask. <clears throat> so they were worried about Nimai, who was now becoming known as Nimai Pandit. Shiva's Thakur would pray, Oh Lord, please do something. This boy is becoming an embarrassment for the Vaishnav community. Well, the Lord heard his prayer. The Lord himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, would go to on a pilgrimage to Gaya. By this time, his father has departed the world and to offer Pinda in Gaya Mahaprabhu or Vishvambar, uh, his official name, also Nimai Pandit, goes to Gaya. In Gaya, he meets one disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri is known as a great, great devotee of Lord Krishna. And one of his disciples, Ishvara Puri, is in Gaya. And something, it's mysterious. There are debates. How did it happen? Somehow or other, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Vishwambar, is attracted to the nature of Ishvara Puri. And he goes to the feet of Ishvara Puri, the lotus feet of Ishvara Puri, and he begs him, please accept me as your student, as your disciple. And Ishvara Puri, feeling embarrassed because he knows who is actually this Vishwambar, but still he accepts and he gives him a mantra. And from that mantra, there is, and this is the next category, the final category of the four of the Adi Lila, there is transformation. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, still not yet called Chaitanya, but Vishvambar or Nimai Pandit, joins the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> and he decides to become a bhakta. And he comes back home, back to Navadip, and he's resuming his day job, which by this time he is a teacher, he is an instructor uh, to students in Sanskrit, especially Sanskrit grammar. But as he's beginning his lessons, he finds it very difficult to concentrate because all he can think of now is Krishna. And so whenever he sees something in the grammar book, he wants to transform it into an explanation, something about Krishna. And he becomes more and more and more it becomes more and more difficult for him to concentrate on this mundane business of teaching Sanskrit grammar. That's his day job, and what is he doing at night? At night he is going to the house of Shivas Thakur. Shivas Thakur was the 
elder Vaishnava, one of the senior uh, Vaishnavas of the local community, and it was Shiva's Thakur who was especially worried about Nimai Pandit as a, as a as a teenager. Now he is coming to Shiva's house to simply chant Hare Krishna, simply dance. And so that's what they do. He with his friends behind closed doors. They don't want to be disturbed. They don't want to uh, be distracted by hecklers. You know what a heckler is? People who are making fun. Because maybe they will think we are a little crazy. Because indeed, they were becoming quite mad. Especially Mahaprabhu would become quite mad. As his guru told him, when he came back to his guru after he was experiencing such intense emotions, what's happened to me? What's going on with me? Ishwarapuri reassured him, oh, this is wonderful. You're the effect of the mantra. Uh, you have been infected. Very good. Not by the coronavirus, but by the coronavirus. Karuna. And so, he quoted a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, evam vrata svapriya nama kirtya jatanurago druta chitta uchai hasatyata roditi rauti gayatyun madhavang nrityati loka bahya Chanting, singing, crying, these will be the effects of taking the vrata of chanting the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> this is a world-famous temple for your enthusiasm in chanting the holy name. So, um, this transformation of Mahaprabhu leads, as we all know, to his deciding, I need to, I need to bring the mercy of Krishna to the world. And to do this, I need to make a lifestyle change. And so he takes vows, the order of sannyas, he renounces. This is the first category of Madhya Lila. He renounces the world and he begins to travel initially to Vrindavan, but he is tricked to go to the house of Advaita Charya, where he meets his mother, who says, My son, what have you done? Your older brother has already left, and now you are leaving. How can you do this? Vishwambar says, I'm sorry, mother. I don't know what I was thinking. But now it's too late. <laughs> what to do? Yes, there is one thing you can do. You can go to Jagannath Puri and stay there. Because then I will at least get news from the traffic of devotees coming back and forth. Not like your brother. Your brother left and I've, we have never heard from him again. Don't do this to your mother. You go to Puri, you stay there. Yes, mother. Did Lord Chaitanya stay in Puri? He went to Puri for a very short time, but he was too restless to stay in Puri. 
he had to spread the glories of the holy name to all of India. And so he traveled, went to the south, met an uh, important devotee, Ramananda Rai. So this is the period of propagation, of spreading uh, the teaching. All this time Mahaprabhu wants to go to Vrindavan. That was really the essence of his aspiration in taking the renounced order. He would go to Vrindavan. He would enter into the memory of his own identity as the Supreme, as Krishna. In the land where the Supreme forgets that he is Supreme, in order to play uh, with his uh, devoted companions. So eventually he goes to Vrindavan. He manages, and of course there are no trains at that time, no buses, no planes, so he's walking all the way from Puri, arriving in Vrindavan uh, in the winter season, staying in Vrindavan and going from forest to forest in the twelve forests over a period of a mere two months, becoming intensely absorbed in memory of Krishna to the point where he is forgetting himself and endangering his own physical well-being such that his assistant, Balabhadra Bhattacharya, begs him, please, Mahaprabhu, let us leave Vrindavan. And he agrees, and he goes back. They, they go back to Puri, but on the way, they make a stop. They make two stops, important uh, meetings take place. One is in Prayag, now called Prayag Raj, I believe where he meets Rupa Goswami. He teaches Rupa Goswami for a period of ten days in the details of uh, the uh, theology and philosophy of what Srila Prabhupada called Krishna Consciousness, Krishna Bhavanamrita. And then he sends Rupa Goswami to Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu proceeds on along the Ganga to Varanasi where he meets Sanatan, Sanatan Goswami, the brother of Rupa. He stay, together they stay for a period of two months and the teaching that is, to both Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, we find in the final chapters of the Madhya Lila in great detail. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is concerned about organization, not just managerial organization. Yes, managerial, he is deputizing these two Goswamis and eventually the others of the six Goswamis uh, to, uh, to head his mission, uh, establishing themselves in Vrindavan, but also organizationally clarifying what is the truth of Krishna consciousness, how to understand that it is Krishna who is indeed the Supreme Personality of Godhead, how to understand the process of devotional service, how to understand our relationship to him, how to understand uh, the whole purpose of spiritual life. What is the aim? What is the goal? What is the perfection of Krishna's seva, serving Krishna? All of this is explained in great detail in the final chapters of uh, Madhya Lila. 
And then we come to Antyalila. Mahaprabhu is back in Puri. And for the first six years of his time in Puri now, he engages very much with his devotees in so many wonderful exchanges. And so for the first 13 chapters of the Antyalila, which has 20 chapters altogether, the first 13, there are two major themes. The first of these is appreciation. Appreciate, appreciating the devotees. We get wonderful glorifications of different devotees in these chapters. So, for example, uh, the uh, detailed description of Raghunath Das Goswami, detailed description of Haridas Thakur, and how they had wonderful exchanges with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we also, that these are appreciations, we also find in these same chapters, sort of mixed in between the appreciations, are corrections. Devotees are being corrected by the Lord. And so, uh, this is another kind of teaching. Uh, learning what is to be done, what is not to be done, examples of what is not to be done uh, are given. And within these, amongst these corrections, we have a nice description in chapter 7, and I thought we could read some of this, in which Mahaprabhu is, in a very sweet way, teaching a lesson to Vallabha Bhatta. Vallabha Bhatta comes to Puri to visit Mahaprabhu, and he's very eager to meet him, and when he meets him, he is full of praise for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he says, for example, this is Antilila chapter 7, Kali Kaler Dharma, Krishna Nama Sankirtan, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahe, Tara Pravartan. The fundamental religious system in the age of Kali is the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Unless empowered by Krishna, one cannot propagate the Sankirtan movement. This is a famous verse. Vallabha Bhatta is saying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you are such a person who has Krishna Shakti. Now there's a certain irony here, because we understand from Krishna Das Kaviraj, who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is none other than Krishna. So to say that uh, he is endowed with Krishna Shakti, is an understatement. Of course he's endowed with Krishna Shakti. He is Krishna. So he has all Shaktis of Krishna. But all right, uh, he is appreciating him in this way. Taha pravartai latumi eto praman Krishna Shakti daratumi ite nahi an you have spread the Sankirtan movement of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, it is evident that you have been empowered by Lord Krishna. There is no question about it. And he goes on like this, appreciating Mahaprabhu. And then Mahaprabhu replies. And here's where... He wants to actually teach Vallabha Bhatta something. Mahaprabhu kohe 
Shuno Bhatta Mahamati Mayavadi Sannasiyami Najani Krishna Bhakti Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, My dear Vallabha Bhatta, You are a learned scholar. Kindly listen to me. I am a sannyasi of the Mayavada school. Are we supposed to believe that? <laughs> the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita is arguing against Mayavada. <clears throat> and here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the hero of the book, in which this philosophy is being argued against, he is saying, I am a sannyasi of the Mayavad school. What? He says, therefore, I have no chance of knowing what Krishna Bhakti is. Are we supposed to believe him? Advaita charja gosai Sakati shar taro shange ammar manna hoila nirmal. Nevertheless, my mind has become purified because I have associated with Advaita Acharya, who is directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, this is the beginning of a series of verses in which. Mahaprabhu is praising different devotees, expressing how each of these different devotees have taught him something. He has learned something from each of these devotees. So we can say that the general lesson that we're getting from this section is quite clear. Here is the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a bhakta who is teaching us a lesson and what is the lesson that we can all learn from devotees not only we can we must it is through the devotees that we are learning what is bhakti even the supreme lord is saying i learn what is bhakti from these devotees from who advaita charya for example I learned from him because, well, he's, he's Ishvara, he's the Supreme Lord himself. Sakshat Ishvara. He goes on to praise him. He is unparalleled, Advaitacharya, in his understanding of all the revealed scriptures and the devotional service of Lord Krishna. Therefore, he is called Advaitacharya. Now, Advaitacharya was also very senior. He was highly respected amongst the Vaishnavas as deeply learned. Um, he was uh, considered very orthodox. He was the person, he, he was the leader of the Vaishnavas in the Navadvip uh, and Shantipur area. Highly respected person. And therefore, it was very shocking uh, to local uh, Brahmins, the sort of smart Brahmins, we might say, uh, and others like them. It was very shocking when Advaita Charya, after he performed the ritual of the Shraddha ceremony, the ritual of honoring the ancestors, in which you offer the prasad after having made the rituals, you, you give the plate, one plate of the prasad to the senior most uh, of the Brahmins present. Who does Advaita Charya give the, the first plate to? Haridas. Haridas? That's outrageous. How could he do such a thing? It was a scandal. <laughs> Harida, socially speaking, it was from the lowest, lowest rank of people. And here Advaita is the highest rank. What is he doing? 
he's making a point. He's making a point. This so-called lowest person is actually highest. Why is he highest? Because he is a surrendered soul to the supreme highest, the supreme personality of Godhead. And he shows that he is surrendered how? By constantly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, So sweet. <laughs> Imagine we could all of us chant with such such energy every time we chant our japa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Wouldn't that be good? What do you think? Today is a good day to make New Year's resolutions, by the way. <laughs> Today is a good day to make a New Year's resolution about your, uh, your sadhana bhakti. Huh? What do you think? Yeah? Only trouble with these resolutions. What is the trouble? Huh? After one week, we completely forget what it was that we resolved. Right? This is a problem. So, Mahaprabhu goes on to praise Nityananda Prabhu. He praises Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He says, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya has shown me the limit of devotional service. Only by his mercy have I understood that devotional service to Krishna is the essence of all mystic yoga. And remember it was Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya who suggests to this young sannyasi, Mahaprabhu had just taken sannyas. How old was he when he took sannyas? 24 years old. I mean, you can really understand how his mother felt, right? 24-year-old 24 24 year young man is leaving home forever. Uh, anyway, uh, he comes to Sarvabhoma. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya sees this young sannyasi and he thinks, we have to help this boy. He doesn't know what he's doing. We have to train him up to become a proper... Uh, a proper sannyasi. And if you like, he said, we can arrange for you to be reinitiated into a better sannyas sampradaya. What? <laughs> Reinitiation? Why? Didn't make any sense. <laughs> anyway, but he, he agreed uh, to listen to Sarvabhoma for a whole week as Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya spoke Vedanta philosophy, day after day after day after day, Mahaprabhu listening, 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 totally silent, totally silent, listening, totally silent, after seven days, how come you're not saying anything? How come you're not asking any questions? How come you're not responding to anything I say? What does Mahaprabhu say? He says, well, he said, Vedanta Sutra makes perfect sense to me. It's just your explanations that, make, that are all confusing to me. I'm sorry. Without your explanations, Vedanta Sutra is completely clear. Mm -hmm. But here, he's giving credit to Sarvabhoma, uh, that he has taught me Krishna Bhakti Yoga, the essence. And it goes on like this, uh, Ramananda Roy, uh, and other devotees are praised. 
So this is um, a kind of subtle correction. Uh, he's being respectful to Vallabha at the same time he's helping him to understand how not to be proud. The second to the last section uh, of the uh, Antyalila, uh, Suttabha Prabhu calls intoxication. Intoxication? I thought devotees have nothing to do with intoxication. Now you're saying there is intoxication. This is confusing. Well, there are different qualities of intoxication. <laughs> the sort of intox intoxication that people in this world uh, indulge in is a very low and very uh, disabling form of intoxication. But the intoxication that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is experiencing, this is the highest illumination of the heart. This is the highest activity of the heart. It is a period, a long period, comparatively speaking, Mahaprabhu's uh, manifest life is altogether 48 years. The last quarter of, this, of his life, 12 years, he is spending more or less in isolation. He's no longer so much mixing with the devotees. He has a few very intimate associates. Ramananda Roy is one, Sarup Damodar is another, and they spend their time with Mahaprabhu as he is simply hearing and chanting and remembering about the Lord in the utterly and completely intense feelings of viraha, of separation. In that intensity of feeling, uh, he is mm, insisting sometimes, he is insisting that his companions help him. But how should they help him? By quoting from Srimad Bhagavatam, by quoting verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. And so as he hears the verses, uh, especially from the 10th canto describing uh, the feelings of the devotees in Krishna's absence, Mahaprabhu identifies with those feelings and in this way his own feelings are uh, unfolding and intensifying and being stirred and enriched uh, over a 12-year period. The final section of this Antyalila and the final section of the Chaitanya Charitamrita is called instruction. And what is this instruction? It is the eight instructions Mahaprabhu leaves for all of us, which we may be familiar with here in the temple every morning as uh, part of the morning uh, kirtan program, we recite these prayers. Cheto darpanam arjanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam shreya kairavachandrika vitaranam vidya vadu jivanam anandam budivardanam pratipadam purnam ritasvadanam Sarvatma snapanam param vijayate Shri Krishna sankirtanam param vijayate Shri Krishna sankirtanam And we can say that the remaining seven verses of the Ashtakam are elaborations on these, on this first verse. Uh, there is nothing better, param vijayate, Shri Krishna sankirtanam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shows us how 
this is done, in what spirit, in what attitude uh, to, to chant the names of the Lord. Uh, it is in a spirit of reception, of receiving the Lord into our heart. Mm. We cannot, as uh, His Holiness Sachin Anand Swami says, we cannot gate crash Vaikuntha. You know this expression, gate crashing? People go to some music uh, festival and they, they try to get in unofficially or to go into some party gate crashing. You cannot gate crash Vaikuntha. The Lord has to appear. The Lord has to open the door. But we can do something to, we can do a lot for the Lord to be inclined to open that door for us. It's all a matter of cultivating the attitude of waiting for Krishna with anticipation. So now we are anticipating, I believe at this time will be Arti, so we can uh, we can now celebrate the Lord's appearance and remember that as he appeared, what was going on in Navadvip at the time? What were people doing? They were taking bath in the Ganga or they were entering into the Ganga and what were they doing there? Chanting. And what were they chanting? Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Nitai Gora Premanande, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gora Premanande. Thank you very much.